Today's speaker is Professor Ellen Stern. He will be talking on cosmic acceleration from Rigate Tidal Moon Gravity. Thank you very much. And congratulations to Bob. I'm sorry I can't, I'm sorry I'm not uh, celebrating there in person. It would be nice. I was there once a long, long time ago, uh, visiting with Bal way back in 1979. And uh, I was a graduate student and Bal was half the, half his uh, current age then. <laughs> um, but actually I can't tell much difference between Bal then and Bal now. I guess all those trips to the, to the gym helped. Uh, they paid off. Also, uh, he's still uh, an inspiration to uh, physicists around the world. Uh, so, congratulations again, Bob. Um, oh yeah, I found I found some old picture that I took uh, when I visited, and um, I I, uh, I I have a vague recollection that uh, I took it near the institute. Um, here it is. Does that look familiar at all? I don't know. My my I, I have this recollection that I took it near the institute institute and there is a uh, there is a contented visitor there that I took a picture of. Okay, so the talk today um, the talk is on uh, an alternative form of gravity that was developed long ago by Reggie and Teitelbaum, and this work is in collaboration with a graduate student here, Shang Zhu. Uh, yeah. So. Um, this in this alternative formulation, um, space the space time manifold is embedded in a fixed higher dimensional background. Um, but the dynamics uh, comes uh, still comes from the standard Einstein Hilbert action. Uh, the only difference is that here the degrees of freedom are not the is the degrees of freedom that do not come from the metric tensor, but rather they come from the embedding functions, uh, the embedding coordinates. Um, and there may be some connection of this old work with some newer work in matrix models. Um, Steinecker, Harold Steinecker showed that uh, in the uh, low energy continuum limit of IKK uh, T matrix models, uh, you can recover the Einstein uh, Hilbert action. Uh, so this, this work might have some relevance to some modern research. Um, one interesting uh, result is that the result, the, the field equations that result from the, from uh, this theory, um, well, they're not equal to the Einstein equations. However, all solutions of the Einstein equations um, satisfy these field equations, which are which I'm calling RT or Reggie Teitelbaum field equations. Uh, but the but Reggie Teitelbaum gravity can have more solutions. Than just Einstein, than the solutions of Einstein gravity. Uh, alternatively, uh, one can say one can say that uh, uh, Reggie Teitelbaum gravity introduces new sources, new source terms uh, to the Einstein equations, and these new source terms are due solely to the embedding of the uh, spacetime manifold into the fixed background. Uh, so the uh, uh, the idea here is to uh, apply this to uh, cosmology, and uh, the question that I want to the question that I want to ask is: uh, Can these new source terms uh, mimic dark energy? Um, that is, can they produce uh, not only a cosmic acceleration? But also uh, the observed transition from a deaccelerating universe to an accelerating one. Uh, so, yeah, the, uh, actually, the uh, uh, an old, uh, a visitor, uh, Aaron Davidson, who used to visit Syracuse uh, quite a lot, I recall, uh, had a, an analogous proposal where he, he used this as an alternative. Uh, uh, explanation for dark matter, but here I want to try it for dark, dark energy. Uh, okay. Oops. So here's the outline for the talk. First, I'll review 
uh, this old alternative formalism of gravity. And then I'll, I'll apply to cosmology in one particular example. Uh, uh, oh yeah, in, in the original formulation of uh, Reggie Teitelbaum gravity, um, it's done in a fixed, it's done in a, um, a flat background, a black room, Background is assumed to be flat, and the uh, and it uses uh, pseudo Cartesian coordinates. Uh, but um, uh, one can generalize this formalism uh, to curved backgrounds, and then uh, there there are more possibilities for embeddings that one can examine. So I I want to do that, and then apply again to another example uh, in cosmology, and then I'll end with some uh, uh, concluding remarks. So first, let me uh, uh, quickly review uh, Reggie Tom, uh gravity. So again, I'm going to assume that the that the background is flat, uh, and then uh, we'll embed uh, uh, space time a space time manifold in in this background, uh, and the metric uh, on the uh, the metric on the surface is just the induced metric from the from the background. Um, and uh, let's see, if one makes, um, well, in the Reggie and Tyrebaum's paper, they made uh, the assumption that the, uh, the metric, this uh, induced metric is uh, non-singular and it's metric compatible. And that led to some compat compatibility conditions on the, or some consistency conditions on the embedding coordinates, uh, which I'm calling Y here, uh, which are uh, useful. Okay, so as I as I mentioned, the uh, the action uh, for this theory is the same as uh, the action for Einstein gravity. It's just the Einstein-Hilbert action. However, here the metric is the induced metric uh, on the surface, and uh, and the degrees of freedom are the uh, embedding coordinates. Um, and let's see. So uh, the tra translational invariance of the Translational invariance of the uh, of the background uh, means that there'll be conserved currents, and these are the equations of motion that you get in in this system. Um, so this is this is the uh, the current that you, the conserved current that you get in Reggie Teilbaum gravity. Uh, okay, the, an, another way here's another way to write it. It's it's useful to define. Uh, it's useful to define this this quantity I'm calling TRT, and then uh, and then the the you can write the uh, the field equation uh, uh, in terms of this TRT, and uh, and and uh, oops, let's see, look too fast here. You can see that uh, uh, a trivial solution is the uh, is uh, is uh, occurs when TRT is equal to zero, and, and that's just the Einstein equations. So here you see that the uh, that any solution of the Einstein equation so solves these equations. Uh, okay. Uh, more generally, uh, there may exist solutions where this thing thing I defined is not zero, and that effectively introduces a new source. To the Einstein equations, because um, uh, <laughs> from the definition of this TRT, one gets an, an equation like this, and it, it, this just says that uh, this TRT is in some additional source, and this addition, this additional source, doesn't come the doesn't come from the stress energy tensor, but rather it's just due to the it's it's uh, just due to the embedding of the manifold uh, into the background. Uh, okay, and as in general relativity, the uh, the energy momentum tensor is conserved. But uh, to prove that, uh, you need more than the uh, Bianchi identity. In this case, you also have to use these uh, these consistency uh, conditions on the <coughs> on the coordinates. Uh, okay, and and this then implies that uh, from the Bianchi identity, this then implies that this extra source term, these extra source terms also have to be uh, conserved. Um, okay. And also that means that you can simplify. You, so this, this field equation that I wrote up here, 
uh, 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 since the T TRT is is, uh, is covariantly conserved, one can just simplify uh, the uh, the field equation to some um, algebraic constraints on this source term. Uh, and one remarkable thing is that um, uh, that this equation is is uh, is just second order in in in, in derivative terms. Um, all the third order terms, all the third order derivative terms cancel. That, that's a little surprising, right? Because because uh, the uh, Einstein equation is second order and uh, and second order derivatives in the metric tensor, and the metric tensor now is the induced metric tensor, which has first order derivatives in the in the embedding coordinates. But it turns out that all the third order derivatives cancel. Uh, okay, and as I said, this this equation this equation puts constraints <coughs> on the um, on these source terms TRT, and additional constraints can come from symmetries and other possible considerations. So um, so there are lots of constraints on the source term, and as a result, uh, what we seem to find is that for many embeddings, in fact, most embeddings that we tried, the source term is is actually zero, and so the the um, if the field equations, these Reggie Tannelbaum field equations, uh, collapse to the, the standard Einstein equations. Uh, but I, of course, want to look for the case for cases where the where the source term is not zero. And uh, so next, we'll apply this to uh, to cosmology, and uh, and uh, and we'll use the standard setup where the metric tensor is the robertson walker uh, metric. Uh, and uh, and the, uh, for the stress energy tensor, we, we can take a perfect fluid uh, in the Robertson Walker uh, frame, uh, which is uh, co moving with the Robertson Walker frame. Um, okay. Oops, going too fast here. Sorry. Now, one can, uh, uh, for uh, one can um, hope for. Um, well, with a, a consistent choice of the embedding coordinates should yield uh, an additional perfect fluid for this extra source. Um, so one can imagine that uh, one has that this extra source uh, also is associated with some some kind of perfect fluid, uh, uh, also in this uh, in the same which is at rest uh, in this uh, Robertson Walker frame, and uh, then you just get uh, you should just get. Uh, Rather straightforward, uh, uh, a straightforward uh, generalization of the Friedman equations. Uh, okay, so okay, so now comes the the hard part, which is which is the embeddings, uh, which concerns the embeddings. Uh, um, well, the, the embedding of any uh, manifold in. Uh, uh, in a flat background should be possible, provided that the dimension of the background is uh, background space is big enough. Also, one needs one needs to have that uh, uh, conditions like the uh, the eigenvalues of the metric tensor or the background can't be uh, uh, or the positive there can't be more positive and negative eigenvalues uh, or less positive and negative eigenvalues of the of the background metric than there are in the uh, embedding metric. Uh, uh, there, um, there are some really old um, uh, um, results that were that were found in this regard, um, and which go back to the the uh, which are almost hundred years old. Um, uh, one result is that you need uh, you need at least ten dimensions for any local embedding of uh, of an arbitrary. Uh, Four-dimensional uh, space-time manifold, and uh, for a global embedding, you need 91 dimensions in order to get all possible uh, embeddings for of a four-dimensional space-time manifold. Uh, but for most manif manifolds of interest, uh, the dimension of the space doesn't have to be uh, have to be so large. Uh, for example, for the case of uh, the case of uh, um, Non-flat vacuum solutions of the Einstein equations. Um, uh, six dimensions is a uh, six-dimensional flat background is sufficient. Uh, in the case of the Robertson-Walker uh, 
manifold. It's possible to embed that in, in, uh, in five dimensions. And uh, I want to look at two uh, non-trivial ex examples of this. Oops, going too fast here. Uh, one was given by Rosen and, and another more recently by Akbar. And, uh, this, the, um, and both of these give um, non-trivial results for this source, uh, this extra source uh, 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 term. Uh, as, as I mentioned, for most embeddings, the source term is zero. Uh, but in these two examples, they're not. Um, and in the first uh, first set of examples, uh, uh, the embeddings are into a flat background, and the uh, and the second set of embeddings are in a in a uh, curved background. And uh, so, let, uh, since I haven't discussed the curved backgrounds yet, let me let me uh, uh, just concentrate on the first example. Uh, let's see what happens. So, uh, so the three cases one can examine. One can examine. Uh, oops, I'm jumping around here. The three cases one can examine. The trick, this trick atomic constant k can be zero, one, or minus one. Um, uh, this is the embedding that was given by Rosen for the uh, for the case of uh, k equals zero, a flat space. Uh, corresponding to a flat space. And uh, it's actually an, an, a non-local function of time. But, uh, but what one finds here is that uh, uh, when, when, when uh, one substitutes, in, substitutes into these um, uh, uh, Reggie Teitelbaum field equations, then what one finds is that the, this extra source term vanishes. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so the, uh, the Reggie Teilbaum equations collapse to the Einstein equations. So this case didn't turn out interesting. On the other hand, the, the case where you have oops, k equals one or minus one is more interesting. The, this is what the embedding looks like in that case, uh, or in those cases. Uh, again, uh, it's non-local because this function b uh, is non-local in time. Um, and uh, and um, and this is what you get for the effective density of this additional source and the effective pressure of the additional source, which you, which you can then substitute into the Friedman equations. And notice that it depends on the on the time derivatives of the uh, of the scale factor a. Uh, C zero is just an uh, integration constant. Okay, and and uh, the Friedman equations. Uh, uh, in the case where there's no no additional energy um, uh, moment energy momentum uh, uh, source uh, are quite simple and you can you can solve them exactly. Uh, uh, k equals one gives you a closed universe. That's the usual case. And k equals minus one gives you an open universe. However, for k equals minus one, uh, one actually finds that the that the uh, acceleration is positive. So that corresponds to an accelerating universe. And here are the, here's the, here are the plots of the, in those two examples, uh, I'm plotting T versus A there. And uh, yeah, and A double, uh, A double dot is, is, uh, is uh, positive for the case of the, uh, of uh, uh, K equals minus one. So this is, this is an example of a, of um, of uh, an accelerating universe. However, it's not it's it doesn't give a realistic model for the current cosmic inflation because there's no transition from a deaccelerating phase to an accelerating phase. So this model isn't isn't realistic. And uh, and here here again we uh, I, I didn't include a um, energy momentum source. Uh, uh, it turns out that the addition of uh, a non uh, non relativistic matter component doesn't help in this regard. It's still uh, you still don't get a realistic a, a case where it, where there's a transition from a, a, a deaccelerating universe to an accelerating universe. So so let's move on then to the second second example. Uh, and uh, and again for this example, 
I, I should generalize the original formulation of regime. We should generalize the original form, formulation of regime, tidal bomb gravity, to uh, to include the case of, uh, of curvature in the background. Uh, the, the generalization is, is straightforward. Uh, so here I'm calling this this thing in blue, this this curly G, I'm calling that the, the metric of the uh, background space, which again, the, uh, is not necessarily flat. Uh, it's not necessarily a flat metric. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, again, uh, uh, it's this generalization. Uh, again, I'm using the Einstein-Hilbert action and the generalization is straightforward. Uh, the uh, consistency relations and uh, the previous consistency relations and the field equations now are a bit more complicated, now become more complicated. But, um, it's no big deal. Uh, also here one sees again that um, uh, TRT equals zero uh, is a trivial solution to the field equations. And that again means that uh, TRT equals zero means to, uh, is equivalent to the Einstein equation. So again, the Einstein equations, all solutions of, of Einstein equations uh, solve the uh, Reggie tidal line of equations. But again, I'm, I'm interested in the case where this new source term is, is not zero. Uh, so now let's apply the cosmology again. And now I want to use this second example that I mentioned, uh, which was given by Akbar. Uh, and here, um, I'm just going to look at the case where the strict atomic constant uh, is zero. And, and we'll ignore additional energy momentum sources. Uh, I think k equals zero is, is, uh, is currently favored. Flat space is currently favored. So, so this, it may be relevant to look at this example, to concentrate on this example. Uh, I'm jumping here. Sorry. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll consider Again, the background can be curved. I'll, I'll consider three examples. Uh, first example is, is, is actually a flat background, uh, but, we'll, but uh, I'll use uh, uh, curve, curve coordinates or, or non-Euclidean or pseudo-Euclidean coordinates uh, to describe it. And then I'll look at the example of, uh, of a uh, anti sitter space five, in five dimensions and, and the sitter space in five dimensions. Um, okay. And for all three examples, I'll I'll take the embedding to be of this form. And again, I'm following this, uh, following a paper by Akbar. B uh, there's there are two functions in this embedding, uh, one in one in the expression for y zero and the other for y four. So one's called b of t and h of t, and uh, and I need to relate those functions to the scale parameter uh, in the uh, Robertson Walker metric. Uh, okay, so let me start with the flat case. To get a non trivial uh, result in the flat case, one actually has to go to some very strange coordinate system that was given by I. Rob Robinson. Uh, it looks, uh, the metric tensor looks like this, this thing, and it actually uh, corresponds to flat space. <laughs> uh, and if one used one uses um, this metric tensor and, and, and the embedding uh, that I wrote down, uh, then you, you get uh, some relations for those two functions, uh, B and H, in, in terms of the scale parameter, which you can solve for. And then you get a, a very simple result for the, the non-zero result for the, the effective um, a density associated with this, this uh, new source term. Uh, which uh, which depends on the uh, well, the time derivative of the scale factor. Okay, and and one can repeat this for the anti de Sitter uh, background. And here it it, it seems that uh, here I chose uh, Poincaré coordinates, but it seems that the coordinate system doesn't matter. Uh, and here are the relations you get. Uh, for those two functions, b and h, in terms of the scale uh, parameter, which you can solve for. And this is the result you get for the this uh, the effective uh, uh, density. Uh, L, L, by the way, is the scale of the background space, the scale of, anti, of ADS5. 
Uh, and uh, and uh, when you take L going to infinity, which corresponds to the flat limit, you recover the result, the previous result for flat space, which is reassuring, I guess. And you get a very similar result for uh, the sitter space. Oops, oh boy, sorry. I'm jumping the gun here, jumping the gun. Okay, this is the result you get for the sitter space. And there's just some change in sign here uh, in, in the expression for the, for the effective density for the source term. Uh, and actually one can, uh, one can summarize all three of these cases with, uh, with this formula here for this, uh, this new source term. Uh, um, uh, and it's written in terms of something I called K5, which, uh, which um, let's see, which can have values one, zero and minus one, which tells you um, if you have what kind of space, uh, what kind of background space you have. So a K5 equal one is the sitter space and, and zero is a uh, flat space and, and uh, K, uh, K5 equals minus one is anti to sitter space. And uh, if one ignores all, and, and all other sources, uh, matter energy sources to the Einstein equation. This is the Friedman equation that you get. It's not so bad. Uh, and uh, and uh, here I here I plot the solutions. There we go. Uh, and it, it turns out that uh, in the case of the anti de Sitter space and in the case of anti de Sitter space and a and a flat background. Um, the acceleration, um, the acceleration is, is negative. So that, so both of those examples cor correspond to a deaccelerating universe. Uh, however, the, the sitter, the sitter space is, is much more interesting, uh, because, uh, here one gets exactly what you want. Um, it starts out for, in the case of, uh, the sitter background, it starts out being, um, deaccelerating. And then there's a transition to an accelerating phase. So this is this is exactly uh, what we want to do. This this is exactly what we want because this um, uh, this is what happens in the case of uh, dark energy. Uh, so uh, so let me concentrate on that example of, of the sitter background. Uh, and here, uh, what we can do is we can um, compare the Hubble prim to make uh, to uh, make comparisons with uh, observations. When we can uh, we can look at the Hubble parameter versus the redshift parameter, and uh, for this particular solution, uh, the equation the equation relating uh, the Hubble parameter h and the, and this redshift parameter z looks like this. It's just a nice algebraic. Uh, relation that depends on two two constants. There are two parameters. There's there's L, which is the uh, scale of the background space, the background to sitter space, and there's C zero, which is which again is a uh, is an integration constant. Uh, and one can then uh, compare these. One can make a plot and compare these results with the with the with uh, with the experimental observation. And uh, one gets a pretty good, uh, one can get a pretty good two parameter fit um, uh, of, the, of, this, uh, of this curve. Uh, that's this solid curve with the, with the data. Um, the, uh, yeah, and uh, um, the, the red dash curve corresponds to the standard model that is a, a lambda cold dark matter model for, for cosmology. So, so uh, uh, it it fits pretty well. This 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 stupid little model <laughs> seems to fit just as well as uh, as the standard model. Um, and and here I here I made a plot of the um, of what of the uh, of the velocity of a dot uh, versus um, versus this uh, redshift parameter. And you can see that uh, the trend, you can see that the transition occurs somewhere around 0. 0.6. Hello, Hello 0. Professor 0. Sun. Just to interrupt you, I just want to remind you that you have 10 more minutes left. 
Oh, okay, no problem. I'm almost done. Oh, great. Uh, yeah. So uh, one gets a uh, one gets the this transition to occur at a redshift parameter around 0.675, and that's pretty close to uh, what you get in the in the standard uh, lambda cold dark matter model. So this this model agrees quite nicely with the, with the standard model of of, uh, of cosmology. Uh, and um, and the the fit uh, was obtained without the inclusion of, as I mentioned before, it was obtained without the inclusion of any any other sources, just this source I call TRT, and and doesn't include the uh, any matter component or any or any cosmological constant component. Um, it turns out um, it turns out that the that the the fit doesn't improve significant significantly when you add these extra these additional sources. Uh, this is unlike uh, the standard model of cosmology where, um, where you require both uh, a dark matter component and a cosmological constant component. And moreover, they have to be of the same order at the current time. And um, that's called the uh, coincidence problem uh, in, uh, in cosmology, and, and here we avoid it entirely. Uh, there's no coincidence problem because there, there are no contributions from, uh, there are no necessary contributions from dark matter or, or the cosmological constant in, in this in this model. Okay, and uh, and both the I, again, this, both this model and the and this and the standard model cosmology give give a reasonable fit for the data that's that's given, uh, which. Uh, is up to redshift parameter 2.5. Uh, they deviate, however, they will deviate, however, for uh, z greater than 2.5. Um, uh, so it, it would be interesting. It would be nice if uh, if, uh, if, if uh, they can get that. Uh, they can observe data from an earlier era. Uh, okay. So I'm now to I'm I'm at the concluding remarks. So here are some some general observations. Um, so this, uh, the dynamics of Reggie Teitelbaum gravity uh, can depend on uh, uh, the background space and the, and the embedding in that space. And, uh, and uh, so the, actually that makes this, that, that's, that makes the situation kind of chaotic. Uh, and I think that, um, I think that's maybe one of the reasons why this this theory has hasn't been given much attention in the past. Uh, however, what we what we seem to find is that for for lots of the possibility, okay, there are lots of possibilities, okay, an infinite number of possibilities, but for lots of them, uh, the the Reggie Teitelbaum equations collapse to uh, the Einstein equations. That is, this extra source term uh, vanishes. And it only seems only seems that it only seems like there are just uh, a select a select number of uh, of embeddings for for which you get a, a non-vanishing uh, source term, or, or, or you get a, a difference between uh, Einstein equations and Reggie Teitelbaum equations. Uh, of course, there's uh, we did we we didn't do a very complete job uh, at all. Uh, there's a lot more. A lot more one can do, and one can search for more embeddings. Uh, also, uh, I uh, I just showed you an example where k is equal to zero, uh, which again I think is currently favored. Uh, but one can also try this for k equals minus one and one, and one can try other backgrounds, higher dimensions, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, a, a difficult question. Um, to address would be the stability of the solutions. And of course, it's difficult to to uh, to just to uh, analyze stability in in general relativity. Uh, so it's not surprising that stability would be a difficult issue here. Um, but here, I guess to uh, to do a stability analysis, you have to consider all possible embeddings of uh, of your manifold. Uh, so that makes life pretty difficult. 
and um, and also there were there's a result that was found by Desir Parani and Robinson. That's a different Robinson, by the way. <laughs> Uh, which is that um, uh, that the uh, that a weak field approximation is not possible when you expand in y uh, because the linear terms um, uh, the, uh, the leading order terms are actually quadratic in y rather than uh, linear um, so uh, so doing a stability analysis uh, is not going to be easy unless one can easily find a, an unstable mode. Uh, that would destroy this system, but but to prove stability, I think would be would be a very a difficult a matter. Anyways, here we see a nice nice example where you can uh, you can mimic uh, uh, dark uh, dark energy uh, by doing this uh, alternative uh, uh, formalism for gravity. Here, everything, by the way, is classical. <laughs> um, okay, I'm done. So we are starting the question answer session. So Professor Balchandran is going to ask the first question. Let me hire. I first Hi. this for being late. The printer. No problem. The printer to the program gave the wrong time at ten ten. So I was delayed, and uh, Sanatan Deagle came and picked me up. I'm sorry. No big deal. Secondly, uh, let me also greet you for talking like this. It, it all go well with you. Okay, I have not seen you for a long time. Let it go. Okay, and then I want to ask you: You are considering this theory, which mm -hmm. consider strings, except that there the embedding is not fixed. Okay. I I'm having difficult hearing. Difficulty hearing you. Did you hear my greetings and so on? Okay. Yes, yes. yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. My understanding is that you have a fixed embedding of uh, some uh, target, some model uh, four dimensional manifold into another four dimensional manifold from what I saw. Okay. Fixed embedding. Not a four, no, a higher dimensional manifold. Sorry? The background space is higher dimensional. Then I don't see how higher it is and where is the induced metric you have used. I don't see it. And is are you fluctuating the embedding? Yes. That's this how we want to find the field equations. Hmm? I don't see yes. the equations. And so how does it differ except for the choice of the RG? How does it differ from what people will do in string theory? Um, it's actually inspired. It was inspired by string theory, uh, by the the old form formulation of string theory. Uh, in fact, that's one can see that from the title of their paper. It's uh, general relativity a la string. So they were they were they were doing exactly what uh, one does in string theory. They embed. Instead of a two-dimensional, uh, a two-dimensional manifold, they embed a four-dimensional manifold in a higher-dimensional background, and uh, and the the action is the Einstein action instead of uh, instead of actually the cosmological constant, or, or instead of the area. Uh, let's see. So it's just the standard Einstein action, but the metric tensor in the Einstein action is the induced metric. So yeah. the, the degrees of and the degrees of freedom are the embedding coordinates. Hmm. And you, yeah, well, you vary the embedding coordinates to get these equations of motion, just like in string uh, string theory. Except that you are using R as the Lagrangian. Correct. Which is different from what string people do, where they correct the area. Mm. Yes. Mm. Well, let me ask correct. another question. You said DCT space. DCT space has horizons. So I don't quite know how. So what 
how does this business take into account the existence of horizons and what happens behind that? But the horizon's at infinity, no? Hmm? Horizon is at infinity, right? I don't, um, I don't quite follow, but uh, maybe. I, I, I haven't thought about it. Yes, but the equations of motion, the evolution equation will uh, encounter a horizon. So what happens? Yeah, the manifold, uh, I, I haven't thought about it. I, I, I can't answer. Okay, thanks. Sorry. And all, let all go well with you. Yeah. Same to you. <laughs> and happy birthday. Hello. Yes. Uh, do, do I understand that the, the RTT menu is essentially to incorporate the self in, gravitational self interaction? To incorporate what? Gravitational self interaction. Is, is that is that the I thought that was the motivation for that. I I I uh, never thought about. I don't think so, really. It's just a result of the different embeddings. No, but I think the see, one way of looking at it. This is I need the uh, embedding in higher dimension because that the gravitational field energy might leak into the higher dimension. And that is how one would really look for that. And so I understand this T mu nu, RT T mu nu, for a flat background. Then, of course, you need a, to, uh, to include the self-interaction, you need a T mu nu. But if you have your background is curved, then that the curvature of the three space already takes care of the uh, takes care of the self interaction. So there is a no need for a additional thing uh, for this. So so long as you have a flat background, then I think your RTT menu is okay. But uh, when you consider a non-flat background like the FRW or this, then there is a, then I thought that the space curvature automatically takes care of the self-interaction. And then the, the motivation for this additional team menu has to be sought out at some additional matter field or what? Uh, that's interesting. I, I'll, I'll have to think about this. But uh, I, the, one thing I wanted to add the, uh, is that even in the case of the curved background, the curved background is fixed. It, ha it has no dynamics. Yeah. The, the other key, second question is about uh, this heater to get your dark energy. But if I have a lambda, that automatically accounts for a dark energy without uh, going through any embedding. There's no, no need to this, because I said one and lamp, actually that my talk uh, about a second talk from now, I will be arguing that the lambda is a constant of space-time structure. And the dark energy is its measure for the first time. Okay, uh, that seems reasonable. That seems reasonable. Okay, if there are no, okay. Hello, uh, this is Denjo. Um, ah, hi Denjo, how are you? Good to, good to see you. Um, I'm good just to see the back of your head. I can see the back of your head. <laughs> oh, I see that's where the way the camera is. I didn't know where it was. <laughs> the, uh, um, that's a very nice, interesting talk, actually. Uh, when you Thanks. embed the four-dimensional manifold in higher dimensions, it's natural to include additional terms like the extrinsic curvature and terms like that. Is there is there any motive? Is there any argument that you can come up with for excluding all of those terms? You, no. you, you've also <laughs> dropped the. 
the cosmological rate, constant, the cosmological constant, which is the Nambugoto. There, is there a right. motivation for dropping all of these in these additional terms? No, this is the this is the original model of Reggie. No, I, I understand that, but it would be nice to. It, it seems very well motivated from from that point of view, but. Uh, since there, since all of these additional terms are also natural, it would be nice to think maybe there's an there's a heuristic argument that you can you can use to exclude some of these other terms. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I just took the minimal the minimal model. Okay, with nothing fancy added. <laughs> it, it might be it certainly would be interesting to add extra stuff. Also. Uh, it would be interesting to derive this directly from well, matrix models the way uh, Harold yes. Steinecker does. Sure. Yeah, an argument like that might be a way of getting it. Okay, mm -hmm. let us <coughs> thank the speaker again. Thanks.